I'm excited to be back into the house of the Lord. It seems like I've been gone for a long time, and it was just Sunday. Um, tonight, we're going to continue our study. We're talking about my pastor. Say that with me. We're on page 49, but say it with me. My pastor, a true gift from God. Say it again. My pastor, a true gift from God. My pastor is not my enemy. But he's a true gift from God. Amen. Just want that to sink in because that's what we're doing in Master Key number eight. And I hope that you all go back in your books because we, and don't throw them away because we will revisit these books again. And it may not be me teaching. I may roll, well, I am planning on rolling it out to different other ministers and the deacons that they can also go back and reteach some things because. Uh, they may have a, a different interpretation uh, or may, uh, may have an interpretation that will help broaden our understanding of everything. So last week we talked about how uh, in Numbers chapter 12, and I'm just reiterating back from page 48, we stopped on page 49, but you know, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 and 8, uh, when God was talking, we was talking about the difference how most ministers uh, always challenging the pastors or the people by saying, you know, my pastor is a man just like me. I put my pants on just like him. I have the Holy Spirit just like him. No one never said you didn't. But what the scripture tells us is that the pastor is on a different level than the people when it come down to God. Um, <clears throat> now, here's one thing you need to understand that we said last week. The gift, the pastor is the gift. The gift will benefit you if you not only, if you, if you, well, let me say it like this here. If you accept the gift, utilize the gift, then it will be beneficial for you. But the scripture on the second hand says that uh, obey them that have the rule over for you. For uh, uh, when they go to God in prayer, they may do it with joy, not with grief. Because if they are grieving, if the pastor is grieving, and, and most people don't understand this, is that your life can be in chaos. I mean, first of all, let me ask you all this. How many of you really believe? I mean, really honestly. Don't say it because you're in God's house, I'm asking. Uh, and it's okay if you don't. How many of you really honestly believe? That the Bible is the word of God. The reason why I'm asking that because you, you, your faith going to be tested because there are some people out there who would make you think that God is not real. Because they have did, they, they research on their behalf, but they have not researched God's behalf. So their research is to find every way they can counteract to tell you that God is not real. And you have a lot of people, you even have people who are leading churches that have said I don't believe God exists. I don't even believe in God. I just teach this stuff to the people because it's a job for me and they pay me well and I'm not going to do nothing else. I'm going to tell them what they want to know. So my question to you all tonight is, how many of you really believe that God exists? How many of you really seriously in your heart believe that the Bible is the word of God? Because if you can't believe that all the way, then... Every principle or revealed will, even God's hidden will, cannot be effective in your life. It would not affect your life and you would not be affected by it unless you really truly believe in God. Most people really find out who God really is when they have had some type of tragic in their life and they have no one or nothing else to turn to but God. That's why you need to be seeking a relationship with God. You need to ask God. So what we was covering last week, looking at the scripture, when most of them I'll say that, you know, I have the Holy Spirit just like the pastor. God talks to me just like the pastor. Well, the Bible defers from that. Uh, God may talk to you, but not like he do the pastor. Um, Look at Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. Now, this was the time that uh, Miriam, we, we covered that last week, and her brother Aaron, they are siblings to Moses. So they were just grumbling behind it. 
who Moses think he is, you know. God can talk, well, y'all know the story that God <clears throat> hit Miriam with uh, leprosy. Then Moses prayed and God healed her. Now, we're going to jump here, but then we're going to go to uh, page 49. I'm just giving you all a snippet to catch up from last week. So, it, it, it's written in, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 and 8. And he said, hear now my words. This is God telling them, hear my words, Myron and Aaron. Hear my words right now. If there be a prophet among you, notice what God say. If there be a prophet among, among you. Okay, we'll say Miriam and, and Aaron, okay? I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. Y'all see that? And will speak unto him in a dream. Now, God, now notice what he said. The prophet, the minister, whatever capacity. God said, I'm going to speak to him in a vision. That go in, in a dream, that go and coincide when you look at Joel chapter 2 and 28, God didn't lie. He said it then. He said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams. But here God telling them, he said, I will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. I'm going to make myself known unto him in the vision. In other words, in other words, in other words, since, since y'all look so good dressing alike, and I saw that old couple on TV I got excited. I said, I said, we have a, a, a couple of married couples at church that dress alike. We have flavor, not flavor, flay. Um, I tell people we have a celebrity because when we have the hallelujah night, he dress up like flavor flay. Look at, but we, we have the Johnsons, and I said, we got the Antoines, they dressed alike. So, okay, you all going to be, um, uh, tonight I want y'all to be brothers and sisters. You know, Myra and Avery, y'all come on. Come on up over here. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Elder Kenneth, you come on. You're going to be Moses. You're going to play the Moses role. You know, y'all don't have to, y'all stand right where the camera don't have to move. People can see how nice y'all look. All dressed like, turn around where they can see you. Look at that, all nice. Okay. So now here's Moses, okay. I'll play the part of God okay so now turn around to me because y'all have a complaint you know y'all been messing with Moses trying to find who do you think you is Moses well Moses is the pastor he's the leader I appointed him for that well who Moses who you think you is do not God also talk to me I can I can preach too. Aaron yeah me too man I you know I know God too so now so now now God said okay now let me talk to you uh and see, Miriam found out, or will find out, just how much she really need Moses. Because when, once I'm angry, I hit her with leprosy. And, 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 and he can just be quiet because I'm not listening to nothing that he's saying. No, no, we're gonna, we don't change this. You, Aaron, you, Moses, because you, you, you have the speech impairment, you know, the study part. So, and that's how Moses was. You, you hear me? Moses couldn't hardly talk. He, he was like that. So now they, they doubling up. So now Aaron couldn't do nothing because now she have leprosy. But then Moses talked to me on your behalf. Right. And that's why I healed you. Okay? So now since, since you want to sit here and talk and you want to talk about who Moses is, I appointed Moses as your leader. So since you want to sit there and say what all you can do, let me tell you this. Now I'm going to the verses 6 through 8. Now, and he said, so I'm saying now, hear my words, and y'all hear me good. If there be a prophet among you, okay, nobody else, it's just y'all right here, you know, so you ain't got to look around, Myra. You don't have to look around, Aaron. I'm talking to y'all, God. So now, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak to him in a dream. Here's God putting him in a place. Verse 7. Moses, my servant, is not so. 
He's not like y'all. He's a man just like you. He's a human just like the both of you all. But when it come down to me and the prophets and my servant, my pastor, my leader, it is different. So look what he says. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house. With him, not with you and not with you. I will speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude, the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Boom. There it is, leprosy. Y'all can be seated, thank you. I just want to give y'all a kind of input because most people learn by watching. This is what God did. He told them, look, if there be a prophet among you, I'll speak to him in a vision or a dream, but not with Moses. Moses is my leader. Moses is my pastor. I'm, I'm speaking to him mouth to mouth. Not like you all. And then once he got through with him, he said, you mean to tell me you wasn't afraid to speak against my servant Moses, so you need to understand that, okay? So, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13, we covered that when Paul wrote and said, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, um, admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love. Now, remember I told you all last week, if you all don't catch it, then we're going over to page 49. I apologize. I apologize again. If you wasn't here, I apologize again. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I was in error when I would tell you all, do not put me on a pedestal. Okay? I want to change that. Do not put me above God or his son or his Holy Spirit, but hold me accountable to the standards of God. You know, hold me accountable because God has some high standards. And if you want... If you want the greatness of God, then you better make sure your leader, you hold them accountable to God's standards because God don't lower his standards for us. So now we look at page 49. Uh, just want to do that little snippet. I'm going to read, read Hebrews 13 to 17, then I'm coming over there, so wait for me. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that much give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Now hear, hear me and hear me well. It is so much foolishness but I'm not, I don't want to call it foolishness because, well no I'm going to call it foolishness. Dangerous foolishness. You have to be careful who you listen to on social media because you're not knowing, and that's for them that's watching too, you don't know me. Unless you really know me, then you don't need to be trying to believe nothing I say because you personally don't know me. You need to actually get to know me uh, and study the word of God if you know that I'm telling the truth or not. But let me tell you how, how, how trickery the devil is. The devil can take a snippet of truth and give it to you to validate his point that is false. I, I give you one and I, I mean, man, in my spirit, I say, Lord, hold me because I don't want to get on there and say nothing to this person. But God, you'll deal with them because what was going on in my spiritual realm, not only was I correcting them in the word, but the last thing I remember saying was, you know what? May, the, may, may, may all the curse of hell come up on you. So I say I'm not going to get on there and say nothing because maybe they was taught. Sometimes people get to the point where they look for something to attack other ministries to draw people to them. And it's a shame. They're on there talking about this tide thing and I'm like, man, look, this, this is so ignorant. This is so ignorant. They don't understand. They need to really go back. I thank God that my dean, I didn't like it, but he made me study the law, which is called the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Law, you know, and the stuff they was talking about 
and not understanding. And I'm like, man, this here is dangerous teaching. But I say, you know what, Lord? It'll serve the people well if they follow her doctrine. And then their lives turn out in shambles. And they'll realize that's why God gave you a pastor. You know, I mean, they can, they, 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 one little word. And what people don't understand is that when the serpent, when the serpent approached Eve in the garden, See, the Holy Spirit got his way of, of, Holy Spirit will get you to do what God wants you to do. Because what I'm talking about now, I don't really have nothing to do with what I should be talking about, but I have to be obedient. The Holy Spirit never told Eve that God was lying. She said, I can't eat of that tree for God. And you know what he said? Thou surely will not die. For God knows the day that you eat of the tree, you would become like him. You would know good from evil. Just twisted it. When you don't have the whole truth, it's a lie. You know. So anyway, let's jump back right here because I'm not going to deal with them because God knows if they contact me in any kind of way or call me out with any kind of foolishness, y'all going to be on there because I'm not going to do no typing. I'm going live and I'm going to address them by name because that's what the Bible says. That's how you deal with foolishness because people need to understand. That's why I tell all the ministers, all the deacons, all the lay people is that study to show yourself approval to God because you will be held accountable when you take God's doctrine and turn it into a false doctrine. It did it with Paul. Paul told him, he said, look, watch them guys because they're teaching a, a, a doctrine that we have not taught them. They knew the right teachings, but they start changing the word for themselves. So anyway, let's get back to this. My pastor, a true gift from God. So uh, in, in the Hebrews, we just read, they say that they may do it with joy, not with grief. For that is unprofitable for them. So don't be like Moses' 70 men. Now these were the 70 men who murmured against Moses along with his sister them had did that too. So I just want to show y'all a snippet of how things went on because just picture you got 70 people there who murmured and complained because he was accountable for the people because God chose Moses to be accountable so they wanted to complain. So you, we have to understand that each local pastor stands accountable for how the people of God worship God and how they follow God's plan and his purpose and his vision and how they remain loyal and faithful to the vision of God because in some cases he is responsible for allowing them to continually uh, to continually bring heartache strife and division among the body because the Bible say if that's going on then what you need to do treat that people that person as an infidel or cast them away from it is because see all it takes is just one bad seed or one bad thing that'll mess up everybody people have lost their lives behind a lie so in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 Paul writes for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. We're going to give an account. Now, one truth that is not taught quite extensively is how you treat the pastor or how you work in the congregation. Everyone will answer to God for what he or she, and, and let me tell you something, vice versa. In the book of Jeremiah and everywhere else, God talked about the, the, the pastor that scatters the flock or the pastor that does this. So don't think that we're just addressing the subject matter here. My pastor, true gift from God, because God gave you a pastor. But I, if there are any pastors watching too, don't take what I'm saying as my teaching and amen with it and try to beat up the people. No, it goes vice versa because we're going to have to give an account too. And I tell young pastors all the time. Don't look at thinking it's going to be a limelight because you see Joel Osteen, Jakes, and everyone else, Ivy Hilliard, and first thing you think about is a mega church, a nice car, and a nice house. You're going to be accountable for those people's souls. You have to give an account. Understand what happened with Moses. With Moses, the people was complaining. And, 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 and while they were complaining, a problem started. They wanted meat. So God gave them meat and they still complained. So God let them wonder. 
for 40 years and everything that was 20 years and older died. So you need to understand, but Moses didn't make it into the promised land because God said, Moses, go speak to the rock and tell the rock, produce water. Well, Moses insulted the people and then he smote the rock when God told him to speak to it. He disobeyed. So God did not allow Moses to go into the promised land because we are pastors. Leaders doesn't mean that we are guaranteed to enter into uh, 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 God's heaven, his kingdom. You know, so we have to follow the same rules that God has. So Paul say, we all going to have to appear before God. So everyone will answer to God for what he or she does or do not do or cause strife or get puffed up or pout because things don't go their way or get upset due to the, the color of the carpet, you know. So these trivial and meaningless matters can, can cause you to get puffed up and slow down the move of the Lord and cause a bump in the road. And most importantly, it can cause you to lose your destiny in God. That's dangerous when you lose your destiny in God. In other words, you know, Pastor, why didn't we paint the wall red? You know, uh, I, I don't like red. I said I want it green. Well, you know, this person over here said purple and this person over here said blue. Well, it just... It's just logical that we ended up doing it red. So you get the pout and then you, well, I'm not going to do it. Oh, oh, they got a bill in front. I'm not giving to that. Oh, I'll just hold my money back. I'm not, oh, you're wrong. First of all, that tent goes to God. That belongs to God. That first part goes to God. So, you know, but this is what he's talking about. Because we have to understand the work that we're doing is God's work. We're doing God's work. And, 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 and I'll tell people in a minute, don't get don't get in the way of God's work. So the day of accountability is rapidly approaching for such gross immaturity. Many people think that because they don't uh, get in trouble with God immediately, their sin is ignored. Look at Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 in your book. If you don't have your book, you can turn there. And it reads, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Because God does not deal with you immediately does not mean that God has forgotten about it. Y'all remember how, you know, our parents and some of you parents do say, you know, I'm going to whoop you. And you'd be scared for, and you look and you was like, well, it's an hour. Oh, she cooked fed me. I don't have a whooping yet. And then when you walk, we used to do this. Then when you walk by mama, you kind of like, you know, because you're wondering if she's going to get you what that unexpected blow. And she don't. And, and, and then she lets you watch TV and you sit in a different corner because you're watching the TV and you're watching her. And then I'm telling you how we used to do. Then Sister Kathy, when she disappear and, and you don't see her no more, you quietly walk to the end of the hallway and peek to see if she getting the belt to, to, to just bust out on me. So you notice that she ain't doing nothing. So you like, oh shoot, then I'm cool. She just talking. She forgot. She ain't going to do nothing. And then about two or three days later, she light into you and say, remember I promised you three days ago. So it doesn't mean that God forgot about it. Okay? Just remember that. So many pastors cry aloud. Where are my mighty men? Where are my armor bearers? Where are my urchins? Where are my choir members? Where are my, where are my musicians at? Where are my ministers at? Where are my de Okay, I got carried away here, y'all. That's not in the book. <laughs> but I, I just got, I went to thinking about where they at? So in other words, you get, you get the logic of it. So rest assured, that God is going to send people who recognize and discern the gift of God within the pastor. That's what you need to do. And that's why I tell people all the time, you don't have to be jealous of your pastor. It doesn't mean that because he's the pastor that, that, that he's more favoring God just going to take him to heaven and leave you here. God just gave him a responsibility. He just chose him. 
just chose him to do to do the job, the task. And the task is not easy because he have to make sure that he do it according to God's purpose, plan, and his will because God is going to hold him accountable. And I often tell people, I, I, man, listen, I, I think I told y'all this years ago, I said, y'all think that you all are going to walk up in God's kingdom and be with Jesus and I'm going to be left out the devil is a lie, and you lying too. Because if anybody going to go in there first, it's going to be me. I'm going to be standing there saying, Lord, here I am. I've done everything you told me to do. I watched over your people. Some listened, some didn't. This is the remainment that followed me. And you said to straighten those that are left. So I straightened these, and here we are. All I wanted him to say, says Captain, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. So and that's what I tell people. It's all about obedience to God that's what it's all about you know it's God's gift his he, he give you a pastor for his vision and everything you know so this is the part that that God wants to do and every pastor is held accountable to telling the people the truth and and all the time the truth don't make you feel good but what the truth would do it would sit set you free you know so again they will stand by their pastor and make them strong, understand that God is going to complete the work he said he would do. And it was the same thing with Moses, is that when they was in battle and Moses held his hands up, as long as his hands was up, you all probably read the story, heard sermons, they were winning. But when Moses' arms got tired, pastors get tired, and his arms start falling, they start losing the battle. He raised them back up, they start winning. When they start dropping, they start losing. Well, Two young men got wise and seen that was going on. They came and each one of them grabbed Moses' arm and they raised it and kept them lifted. So the thing about it is, watch this. Now, most people might say that's Old Testament. Well, you need to read some of Paul's letters when they abandoned Paul. And Paul said, you know what? They, 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 left, they left me and they started off with me. They left me. But you know what? I'm going to tell God on them and God going to deal with them. Is because God assigns you, you have to understand the purpose. The purpose. Number one, I didn't choose to be the pastor of Heart of Faith. You all didn't choose to be members. In fact, I didn't choose Jesus. You all didn't choose Jesus either. Jesus said that in the word. He said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Why did he choose me? More than just to be saved. <clears throat> yeah it, 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 and that was done salvation was done anyway because God said look he sent his son into the world and not to condemn the world but that through him the world be saved so why did Jesus choose me why did he choose you why did he choose you sister Trina sister Kathy George why did he choose you he chose you to be a part of his purpose his plan, his will, his vision. That's, that's through the Bible. That, that's, when you look at every leader in the Bible, number one, as I tell pastors, what you don't understand is the pastor get the brunt in first line for any and all brutality. You know, but God chose us for his purpose, his plan, his will, his vision. That's bigger and greater than any pastor. So he said, I want you to be a part of what I'm doing on the earth. When Jesus, I love the way he told his disciples, when you pray, pray our father. And then he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. See, in, on earth as it is in heaven. So God had a purpose, he had a plan and a will and a vision. And that's what we're a part of. You know, so when I say hold the pastor in a, in a, in a high standards, you keep them up there. You t I need to understand what the vision of God is and everything. And it's all about us reaching out to people, telling them about Christ. You know, see, Troy, I'm using them for an example. Troy have a, uh, have a plan. Troy planning a big, this is not true, y'all. This is just a uh, 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 it's, it's not a lie, so I don't want y'all, because if I don't straighten it out, it will be a lie. So we're going to say this is a parable, okay? 
Troy is planning a big birthday celebration for his wife, Lydia. Okay? Uh, so Troy, he's planning that. That's his plan. Okay? Troy will is that he wants so many people there, man, that is no room for them. Because he has visualized this. So Troy realized, I can't do this by myself. So Troy picks out certain people to help him. They didn't choose Troy. They didn't come and say, I want to help you, Troy. Troy chose them. So Troy chose each one of us to help him to make that come about, to spread the word. That's what God did when he chose each one of us is to be taught the word, spread, because watch this here. He didn't just choose Kenneth and say, Kenneth, you go and tell him I'm having a party. I want him here. No, he sat down and told him in details. Look, we're going to have this thing at Barbara Jordan Park. And then make sure, tell everybody to wear blue shirts because there may be other people there. And we'll be able to know who all attending the party because without a blue shirt, you're not going to be able to come in. So make sure you tell everybody to wear a blue shirt. It's going to start at this time. And so what I want you to do, Kenneth, you tell them it's going to start at 3. And then, Trina, you tell them, your people, you tell them it's going to start at 3.30. And then, uh, uh, Ramsey, you tell them it's going to start at 4 o'clock. So they all won't get there at the same time. They'll come in droves. Now, that was his plan, his purpose, his will, his vision. And he chose each one of us to do it. Well, that's the same thing. God has a plan, a purpose, and a will. Thank you. And, and so what he, what he does is he chose us. So we, we're getting instructions every day. How many of us are reaching out there telling people about the plan, the will, the vision of God? And it's simple. It's for their life. You don't have to live like this. God has a plan, a purpose, and a will. Jesus said, bring me fruit that's going to remain. So, again, it's not just the pastor. It's all of us working together hand in hand. So many people, again, think that uh, because they don't get in trouble with God, God will just ignore everything. But Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 tell us different, that God, God, God will take care of what he said he would do. And, and not because he don't like you, but because he loves us. The Bible says, God said, whom I love, I'll chase him to the end of the earth, I'll whoop him with many of strikes. So God loves us that he will correct us to make us go in the right way. So we need to understand that stand by your pastor. Um, so any critical issues that must be addressed is what if the pastor, uh, the, the set man of God messes up in sin? Others exclaim, I'm not going to submit to this pastor because he could be wrong and could have sin in his life or could make a bad mistake. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 through 25. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women Oh, y'all, that ought to be familiar in our culture, huh? Pastors get busted with women. Uh, 10 o'clock news. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There was a sexting operation. And among them, pa not Pastor Bain, Pastor Troy Johnson and his mug shot up there. Now go to church. <gasps> That's Pastor, oh, man. Ooh, girl, you looking at the news? I recorded this thing live, you know. He got busted. Well, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all of Israel, how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle. See, listen, I told you all this before. The stuff that's going on now, this stuff ain't just started. But, but look, as, as believers, we, we look like, oh my God, he did what? She, this stuff was going on in biblical days. Diseases, sickness, illness, lying, cheating, all this stuff was going on in biblical days. Oh, here, here's one. But, but uh, uh, let's see. Where are my ministers? Raise your hands. Ministers, raise your hands. Watch this. Have y'all heard this one? But she called herself a preacher. 
Y'all heard that one? He called himself a preacher. You know, Eli, look, look what it said. His sons and told Israel how they lay with the women and symbol. Now, this is not giving you a light. Let me straighten that up. Don't you go out there doing this. No, 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 no. Remember, God will get you. I'm just showing you something here. They lay with the, at the door of the congregation. And he said unto them, why do ye, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord will slay them. First step, now again, critical issues. What if the pastor, the set man of God, messes up in sin? You know, I'm not going to submit to this pastor. Now, first of all, that, that shows what the Bible say, that if, if, if thy brother is caught in the fault, let them that are spiritual. Now, that lets me know that everybody is not spiritual. So you need to be watching who you ask to pray for you. Because everybody is not spiritual. Say, but let them that are spiritual pray him back to life. Because watch what he said. He said, there is a prayer unto death, but I, I don't want you to pray that prayer. Pray him back to life. First Samuel 2 and 20, 29. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and ourisrest, uh, onerous thy sons above me to make yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offering of Israel my people now see the pastor can't go along with that it, you know I, it don't make no difference how much money you give if you wrong you wrong you know I, I've told you I've been through them challenges I've had them come and tell me you got the wrong people the wrong off and I'm looking at the love offering is greater than the tithe there's something wrong with that picture I didn't, I didn't have them promise that, you know what, Bishop, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 give $10,000. But they was trying to get a word. No, 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 you don't give no word. No, 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 you don't. No, you're not going to tell nobody. No, no, you sit down. Never got the 10000 And a lot of people, a lot of pastors have messed up because they look at person give that big check and there it is. There it is. He can be standing up talking. Well, y'all know we, we ain't met the budget. Yeah, that's right, Pastor. You tell him. Y'all just going to go to hell because y'all won't pay. Y'all need to give your money. That's right, brother. Amen, brother. Well, ain't y'all getting mad? He tell him, no, he not. He's just the one that give you the biggest check. And a lot of pastors have done that. That's what they're addressing here. You know, want to give them a word. Because if they don't give them a word, then the check won't come. I tell every pastor this. If God said it, let God be responsible for funding his vision. He did not ask you to fund his vision. Make sure it's the vision of God and God will fund it. Okay? When you put your own stuff out there, now you have to start lying to the people to get your stuff done. You know. So again. He said wherefore kick ye. At my sacrifice and at my offering. Which I have commanded in my habitation. And are, uh, honor is thy sons above me. You mean you, you're going you gonna to honor your sons above me. To make yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people. Listen I'm talking to, talking to pastors now. Don't you sell out. That's what God is telling them here. You know, Samuel was talking. You, yo, you just going to go against me and you just going to say, oh, that's okay, you know. No, uh-uh. Because you want the chiefest of the offerings. And I, I, I tell y'all the truth. Everybody know this. This stuff ain't just thought happening now. This stuff was going on back there in the Bible days. They still doing it. 
You have leaders right now would not tell the people the truth. And, 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 and you know, because, look, I even told my own dad, God bless his soul. Uh, he's resting in Christ. My dad was married five times. And uh, after his fourth marriage ended, he asked me to marry him and his fifth wife. Now, my dad wasn't saved then. But at this point, he had got saved, ordained deacon and everything. So before he got ordained as a deacon, he had got saved, gave his life to Christ. And then when he came to me and he said, son, would you be honored and marry me? You know what I told my dad? I said, you know what, dad? I would love to on one condition. He said, what's that? Is this going to be your last wife? Because if you can't answer yes to that, then I'm not, I'm not going to marry you. I wasn't going to partake in, in, in that. No. Because I wanted him to understand the, the value of the importance of being married is that you by all, all choices you can. Because my dad told me this. He said, son, I got five pair of blue jeans and five t-shirts. So that's what I enter in into a marriage and relationship. I enter in light. So when the trouble starts, I don't have much to pack to go. And Brother Ike, that messed with me for a while. Because I was like, before I even got married, I was like, man, I need to be like my daddy. Give me five pair of blue jeans and five t-shirts. And when you give me a problem, I'm gone. So I had to, I had to get him to commit. And, and bless be God, when he died, he was married to the same woman. And if I serve right, all the wives were at the funeral except for one who had already died. And they didn't have no problem. So the thing of it is, God said you don't do it. So I tell people, don't do this for money. No, God, God already signed and said you'd be taken care of. But when you start letting it taken care of, put you in a position where you choose an evil over God, then there's a problem. There's a problem. So look, watch this here. Look, 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 look down. Again, we find comfort and reassurance in God's word. Eli's two sons had sinned so greatly and messed up so badly that Eli <coughs> backslid himself. God always has a plan. He got rid of Eli and his, and his two wicked sons. God raised up Samuel in their stead. And unfortunately, Samuel's sons did not learn from the faith of Eli and his boys. This is why God revealed word is to let us know not to make the same mistakes. See, there's a difference when you do something and you, you, you repent and ask God for forgiveness. But it's a difference when you just get comfortable with it and you just continue to do it. First Samuel 8 and 1, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. First Samuel 8 and 3, and his sons walked not in his ways but turned aside after lucre, that's money, and took bribes and perverted judgments. And this stuff goes on. I'm not going to call no names. If y'all don't know, that's y'all business. But there have been prominent pastors right here in our city that was under investigation of the FBI and everything because there were a lot of what they call that, 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 that washing of the money going in through the church. Drug dealers and rappers hiding their money, sending it through the church and all of that. Listen, you, you can't give by the government. You know what they say? Follow the money trail. You know, they, they were investigating. That, 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 there's one. This had nothing to do with, with church, but this was a builder. Thank God that he, he did his time. He's doing fine now. I pray that he learned his lesson from it. He, he went to prison. From behind that. There were another one. Him and his wife and his daughter. I'm not, I, look, I, this is not mess. This is true fact stuff that happened. Right on Mesa Road. Messing with the government money. They had him on the news. Everybody saw it. He never spent one hour in prison because he died. But the wife and the daughter had to go to prison. 
you know. And you'd be surprised of some of the I, I had someone, I'm not going to call it their name, but people would do anything. And you know what? It'd be, it, listen, I tell people all the time, it, it's the seat. Listen, I'm not boasting, I'm not bragging, I'm thanking God. I've been tested. And all my life, I've always been, number one, I don't want to go to jail. I didn't even like to catch whoopings. So I made sure I tried to do my best to do everything. Now, I'm not going to tell y'all that I'm just, you know, I never did nothing wrong in my life. I just got away from the stuff that I know that was going to leave enough evidence that I was going to get caught. You know? In other words, if I can get a penny candy, I'll get that rather than getting a bag of candy. I can hide the one little candy, but not a bag. You know, I'm not saying that I never did nothing wrong. I made some bad choices, but I, I made sure. So the thing that we look at, that we look at and have to understand is that we have to be careful. And I'll tell you a true, true factual event. <clears throat> I was approached. You know, I've been tested. I thank God I've been tested. Oh, y'all just don't know. I've been tested. Had them to come and say, oh, man, come here. <clears throat> you know, get personal too. And I'm not going to say too much how it was personal, but I'm going to say personal enough to say where they don't say bishop or pastor, but hey, John, let me, let me talk to you, man. Let me ask you something. Man, the IRS is all on me, man. And they trying to do this. They trying to do that. Man, God, leave man. Just, let me ask you something, man. Uh, what if I, what if I, 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 I like give you twelve hundred dollars for your church? You know, I mean, that's a lot of money, man. You can use twelve hundred. At the time, we didn't hardly have nothing. Yeah, that sounds good. Would you write me? I have your people to write me like a statement saying that I gave like like ten thousand or five thousand over the course. And you know what I looked and I said, what? You know I can't do nothing like that. Man, you have both of us sitting up in prison. You know? So, you know, I've been tested, Brother Troy. I've been tested, that, you know, to, on stuff like that. No, absolutely not. Can't do that. You have a lot, and this is what it's addressing. You have a lot of people that do that to this day. You know? I, here's another one. Here's another one. My wife will tell you this one. Uh, I'm not going to say this person was my friend. I knew them. And they were to come into millions of dollars. And we, we had meetings with them. I mean, we went and looked at the house. If you all go and look on YouTube, 88 Grand Circle up there in, uh, in the Woodlands. Uh, but we walked through that house. It took us a whole hour and something to view the whole house. This deal was thrown to me and said, the attorney said, you know you're going to have to give because as rich people, they got to give away so much money for taxes. Say, so you know what? He said, you know, my attorney said, you know, uh, that we find a church is the best place. Now, this is what my wife will tell you. Am I lying? He said, my attorney said that a church is the best place to give the money to don't choose no other choose the church because it ain't too much that the government can do in church records you know and you know i thought about that and i'll say you know man just just give give the donations you'll be treated like everything else you know because we never got it you know uh the sister turned around and say oh, well listen i, I want to build my own church and put my own pastor in there and I'm just going to pay them a good salary and buy them. A I'm telling y'all, my wife will tell you this conversation was real. And I'm going to put, I'm going to put the pastor in there and I'm going to pay him a salary. And that's all he's going to do is just going to be the front man for the church. They were going to do everything laundering. God didn't let none of that stuff go through. In fact, let me tell you something. As far as I know to this day, God closed that door on that. They didn't get a dime. And when I say it was money, it had something to do with oil. When I'm talking about how big it is, they grandfathered most of that stuff you see built up there at the Woodlands on, uh, what, is that, what is that street? Nobody going to know the name, you know. 
that, uh, what is that street when you're going up there, 45, uh, that first street, huh? No, before you get there, where I had to go to take the car. Uh, what's that exit? Ah, uh, Rayford, Sawdust Rayford Road. Exit there, hook to the left. Everything that you see built there was, it's his grandfather's land. That's where it was all that with gas and oil under there. And, and, and so watch what happened. Folks wasn't giving it up. They say, y'all need, we got so much invested. And we talking about probably was billionaires. But they, when they start trying to do all that trickery stuff, and I mean, we, we actually saw stuff on, on the uh, computer show everything. He had everything laid out. Let me tell you something. A realtor would not show you a house that's worth $15 million if they know that you cannot afford to pay it. They showed them the house. We walked in the house. We viewed the house. But watch what God did. When they went to trying to go that illegal way and had their plans, God got out of it. Sisters and brothers started fighting, saying what they're going to do. Started divorcing their husbands. And so Antoine, last I heard, everything went AWOL. I don't think they got a penny. So you don't play with God. So let, let, me, let me wrap this part. Let me wrap this part up. And his sons in, in Samuel 8, 1 Samuel 8 and 3. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre. And see, that's why I tell y'all, as as your pastor, I've been tested. I've been tested every which way. You know, no bribe taking. Because you know what I tell people? Man, I'm, that, that money not going to let... No, I'm, I'm trying to make it into heaven with God. I'm not going to do no foolish stuff like that. Samuel blundered by making his sons judges. They did not walk with God as their father walked with God. God replaced Samuel's children with Saul and he walked out of harmony with God and was succeeded by David to be king of Israel. God knows how to take care of erring men and he doesn't need latitude to help him do it. Now these examples show that there is no excuse to be unsubmissive to the pastor in spite of his shortcomings. They must be treated as David treated Saul. David treated Saul with respect. The bottom line is, because a man or woman, God, fall, it doesn't give us the right to treat them. I tell people all the time, Saul had fallen. But watch this. David, they want to know why David didn't kill him. David went in there and cut a piece of his garment. And, 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 and David told him these words. David said, because he's anointed. See, you could be, God can re, replace you, but yet you're still anointed. So David knew the word that God said, don't you touch my anointed. And don't do my prophet no harm. The scripture says, who are you to judge another man's servant? Don't you know that if he fall, then his maker will pick him up. His God will raise him back up. That's why when Eddie Long fell and everybody was judging him, making fun of him and all of that, you know, getting up there, he was swole. Now look at him, all that. God took care of all them people. He, 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 he still kept him in leadership. So you got to understand, God would deal with his own leader. God don't need you or me to deal with his leader. He say for you to pray. You know, and he'll deal with that. So listen, that, that's, that's it for tonight. If you have any questions, write them down. We'll answer them next week uh, as we get ready to go into Master Key number nine. And we only have a few more keys to go before we're done with it. But, you know, every now and then we may choose someone to go back and reteach one of these keys, you know, just to keep us enlightened on the word of God. So with saying that, we want to say good night to everyone that's watching.